Isn't that lovely? If I was smart, I would do it. I would put it into. Logic Pro and equalize the sound a little bit, but no, I'm not going to do that. Bill Kurth, the ventriloquist on soap, said the sound was, man was having trouble making him. He was milking the dummy. He was my <laughs> miking the dummy. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> did, did everybody see that? That's hilarious. <laughs> Bill Crow says the Yes, did you read what Bill Crow just said? We were talking about my sister being a ventriloquist. And Bill says, the ventriloquist on soap said <laughs> the sound man was having trouble miking him. He had the mic on the dummy. <laughs> like this. So mic's on the dummy, too. Anyway, uh, is everybody all right? Good. I, uh, I, I just want you to know. I finished this book tonight, today. Look, look, it's got a lot of, a lot of pages. I see my bookmark. I used that bookmark, something I invented called a bookmark. I didn't know what to call it. I, I was a slap in place thing. So finally, I, I, I decided it was called a bookmark. And you, it's really a, a novel idea. And is this the Jay Lenhart Tomoko Ono Don't You Wish bookmark, which we'll talk Francois into putting out eventually. It's all there. It's just all recorded and ready to go, Francois. Um, and here's the bookmark. And uh, you too can have one. All you need to do is uh, let me know. Just, you know, you know how to reach me. Just let me know if you really want one and we'll manage to get you one. But anyway, the point was, I read this whole book and it's The Wages of Destruction by Adam Tooze. And it's a, a, just a light, little light reading about the, the total economic setup of Nazi Germany from 1933 to 1945 and how they managed to produce what they did and how they managed to put a thousand panzer tanks. It's very complex, but it shows you the, uh, the, the complexity and the, of this. And it also shows that with everything, Hitler was just so crazed about getting rid of all the Jews that he screwed up the war. He screwed up everything for himself because he couldn't make good decisions because he was just so fanatical. And, uh, but it's a, it's really a long, it took me four months to read it. Now I'm going to read Jane Austen. I think I'll read that. Or maybe a Peanuts uh, book. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. But it was a good book, and Adam Tooze is quite a writer. He's English, and he, and he often uses the word whilst, W-H-I-L-S-T, whilst this was going on, whilst that was happening. And you see it, and you go, you, nobody ever writes that, except Adam Tooze, who is English. And he, but he's, the book is so researched, it's crazy. And, um, you know, a lot of us are very curious about Especially these days, see, there is a certain parallel to be found in today's atmosphere. Let's put it that way. Um, let me see, what did I write this morning? Oh, yeah, I wrote this this morning. No, 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 let's not start eating bleach. It probably is not a wise thing to do. Clorox and Lysol and all the disinfectants, all the disinfectants are probably not that good for you. All that stuff you find underneath the kitchen sink is not meant for is not meant for ingestion. So why would the president make such a dangerous statement? Isn't that really the question? Intravenous Lysol would seem to be quite harmful. Shooting Lysol straight into your veins. Heroin would be safer. 
some people actually survive, though it messes with their brains. Just a light little poem I, I wrote this morning, thinking about people. Um, I'll probably put that on. I'll probably record that. I probably will. Um, I know. I knew a bunch of junkies. And we've all probably in the music business know junkies, and I was amazed that it was if they could get off of it, there seemed to be no real harmful bodily effects if they could really get off of it. I mean, uh, I knew a bass player who died in his 90s who was a big, big junkie. And he got off of it and he died. Old, died an old man. I mean, I'm sorry to get so somber uh, with this uh, this morning, but uh, what the hell. The present situation gets you somber, especially when you're thinking about, it. now we're going to open up and we're all going to go outside and we're all going to live our lives like normally again. And some people who are maybe my age or, or Bill's age, Bill Crow's age, are not so dying to get out uh, in, into the middle of the corona world. Uh, you know, we want to make sure it's safe. Maybe wait till the vaccine comes along. You know, here I am, or something. Uh, but that's all. You know, sometimes I can't help myself. Wake up in the morning and go, what the hell happened? So, I uh, made a list. To the, uh, let, well, oh, uh, let's start here. You have to start with that. My theme, or else this show can't begin. See, you have to put the, uh, this has to come before in your pocket. If you drag it behind you, it probably doesn't even like to work. Let me tell you something as we start the show. It's a little something I thought you should know So I will tell you as you settle into place It's impossible to sing and play the bass so we're You're a lovely group of people You deserve the courtesy Of knowing what you can expect of me I've practiced but it will not mean a thing Cause it's impossible to play the bass and sing Sing, sing, sing. You see, the bass is fretless. It's not like a guitar. On bass, you spend your whole life wondering where the hell you are. It's got no little markers, just the fingerboard so bare, and lots of notes which often are not there. Then when you start singing, you've got lyrics on your mind And the notes on bass become impossible to find To remember lyrics, melodies, bass lines and chords Is no less a miracle than Lord's do 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 So as I make a thousand errors, sit there and be kind Do, do not throw tomatoes at me, keep this all in mind This is art. Remember this. Our eye will fall apart. Then I'd have to pray to God to come and intercede. And she'd only sit and laugh at my wanted greed. She made the rules for molecules, atoms, time, and space. And she knows it's impossible. To sing and play the bass. 
I uh, just today started my series on YouTube called Jay Lenhart Sings and Plays the Bass Lessons. And um, I thought it'd be fun. I mean, a lot of people like to do this. And they, they, I get a lot of questions. How do you do it? And I go, well, I don't know. You just do it. Uh, and then I started taking it apart. And one of the song I played today, <clears throat> I used as an example. And I won't give the title of it because I have to have the, the uh, make the computers figure out what's going on. I mean, like I say, if they can figure out the bass and the voice, they probably can't. So I just said it. Here's the first song that was on my lesson. Oh no, it was E flat. <laughs> Pack up all my cares and woe. Here I go, singing low. Bye, bye, blackbird. Where somebody waits for me, sugar sweet, and so is she. Bye bye, blackbird. No one here can love or understand me. Oh, what hard luck stories they all have. So make my bed and light the light I'll be home late tonight Blackbird, blackbird, goodbye Here's another song I, 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 I used to sing. I used to have, I actually work with Rosie Clooney. I don't have too many, I don't, very few pictures of her. It's a shame because she was great to work with. I totally forgot about that. And I used to go do sound checks for her because she hated sound checks. And I would, uh, I had, to, her voice was low and mine was, I could sing exactly in her key. And um, she used to sing, uh, Hey there. Are you with the stars in your eyes? Love never made a fool of you. You used to be too wise. Do, 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 do. Hey there, you with your head in the clouds. She has you dancing on a string. Hey there, you with your nose in the air. Oh man, I forgot the words. Hey there, hey, hey there, you with the I, I won't remember now. I'm under too much pressure to remember, and it won't come. You're the head in the clouds. She has you dancing in the break, and she won't care. No, that's not it. Okay, but the, my point was, before I forgot the lyrics, was what Red Mitchell made up great 
changes to, to that little A section, the section A. So well, let's just imagine I know the words. Reg changes. The edge dancing on a string break. No. Hey there, you with your nose. I can't remember how it goes. Anyway, <laughs> I did remember it then. No, I just get them confused with head in the clouds, nose in the air, this and that, feet in the chair. I don't know what it is. Don't ask me. I just work here. I know they're like, love Red Mitchell's changes. Bill Crow, right. 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 Thank you. Bill Crow agrees, ladies and gentlemen. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, Denying. There's no. Thing. Oh, did I bring my little things? In? Did I bring my two little? I I found all the lists of the words that we've been using, and I didn't. I had them outside in the hall, but I didn't bring them in. Uh, talk talk among yourselves for a second. I gotta find them. I'll be right back. Write to each other. Say nice things now. Be nice. Here I come. I hope you hope you somebody got out of their chair. Um Here, I found these, these two uh, these two files, and the list of words is so wonderful that I'm thinking of making a list, a big song of all, including tonight's list, which will have to happen. Fiddlesticks, karaoke, glue, chocolate, kumquat, rambunctious, dust ball, chardonnay, bamboozle, and of course the ever popular. Upsidasium, Gratitude, Potassium, Fortnite, Underwater, Proctologist. I'm really actually probably going probably to have to do that. So while we're at it, um, no, it's too early. I, you need to warm up. I can't just be asking you words that you need to relax, you need to whatever you do. Eat. Maybe you're having dinner. I know Bernie and, and uh, his wife, Bernie Feinberg, is having dinner right now. Uh, Bill Lenhart has that arrangement too. Good. Good. Phil Bullock, wait for it. You mean the words? Yeah, well, I could look them up, but uh, hey there. Just give me a second. Hey there. <laughs> Computer, let's go into Jay's songs and let's go down to H. That would be H I. Okay, went too far. Oh no, I don't have it. I don't have it. Damn, I didn't put it in there. All right, we'll have, we'll have. Uh, this is better than Mister Rogers. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I just don't want you guys fighting with each other. I, I know what happens when I leave the room. I think I see the music there. Can I get it open? Very important for me to do this. Yes, here it comes. Hey there, 
You with the stars in your eyes. Love never made a fool of you. You used to be too wise. Hey there, you with your head in the clouds, though she won't throw a crumb to you, you think someday she'll come to you. Better forget her, her with the nose in the air. She has you dancing on a string, break it, she won't care. Once you take this advice, I hand you like a brother, blah, 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 blah. So I sort of had it. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to save this where I can get to it. Duplicate, excuse me for a second. You just, uh, this has to be done. Okay, hey there, and it's going into Jay's songs. Not my songs, but in where I keep my music. Okay, that's good. So I started a lesson today on YouTube. Called Jay Lenhart sings and plays something. Like it. It's it's a, it's going to be fun. I'm going to take all these standards and play them, and then mess them up as I do, and then use that as a lesson. So you see, now you got to know the lyrics. See, you got to know where you're going. The key's too high, and then try to talk about thirds and fifths, and just put a whole series of them up there. Let's see if I can get away with it. And what? Pajama game. Pajama game. Hey, there's from Pajama Game. Does there, did anybody know that besides Linda Watts? Hmm? Hmm? This is better than... This is... Mr. Rogers had nothing. He talked about the neighborhood and, and the little kids and the ding, 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 the train. I've got a bass. And, and a bass. And I have a pencil. I take my pencil. And I've got rosin. Did Mr. Rogers have those things? No. Absolutely not. Did Mr. Rogers write songs about heroin? No. No. He didn't. He probably probably thought that was, you know. Wouldn't it be funny if it about that? Oh, never mind, I won't say it. It was sung in Hernando's Hideaway, says Albert Kutzum. My beloved friend and accountant who kept me on the streets for all those years. The Jama game, yep. It was Slap That Bass, Kiddo. Now that's a good song. Slap That Bass. Because I, I know that song. Slap that. I did it. I've done it. Slap that bass. Slap that bass. Slap it. Ooh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, let me print it out. Let me print it. And I'm going to run over to the printer and get music. <laughs> Come on, printer, don't. Come on, printer, don't let me down. Come on, beats. Yes, that's my printer, not my wife's printer, not the printer next door. It's our printer. Okay, now I'm going to trust you for, for 10 seconds to just behave. Okay, I'm back. Back in your seats. That's good. Who put the little... Oh, never mind. I'm not going to... Remember those little machines? The little fart machines? There was... You could get a paper hanger and get a washer and a rubber band and attach the rubber band to one side of the washer so, so you had like a slingshot and a rubber band in the middle. And you twist it up then you put it under here, and then you, <laughs> you loon up a little bit, and it's like a jet-powered. Uh, what's the proper use? What's the proper word for fart? What's the? Oh, I can't think. Of it. Never. Mind. I can't think of anything. But I'll, I'll have to demonstrate that to you sometime. You're taking requests. How about my favorite song, "Me and Lenny." Phil Bullet. Phil, for you, I'll do it in a second. Albert Kutzen, we missed you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Albert. It was only 10 seconds. Please, you've got to... <laughs> Bill Harris had one of those machines. I'm going to make one 
Flatulence. Thank you. Flatulence. Douglas Romoff. Doug Romoff knows everything. Phil Bullock. Flatulence. You see, uh, you guys know each other? Doug, you know Phil? Phil, you know Doug? You're both very talented people. You should know each other. Um, now, here's the first time I've sung this in a while. But I know I can do it. You're supposed to slap the bass. But I, I hurt my middle finger slapping the bass. I twisted it. And it remained twisted. So I won't be slapping the bass tonight. Ever again. Boom. Dum. Boom. Boom. Dum. 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 Zoom. 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 The world is in a mess. With pile the text, I'll do it a little bit slower. Zoom, 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 zoom. The world is in a mess. With politics and taxes and people grind and axes, there's no happiness. Zoom, 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 zoom. Rhythm, play your ace. The future doesn't fret me as long. Oh, that's not the right change. The future doesn't fret me as long as I can get me someone to slap that bass. Happy, happy, wrong key to who I must have written this for. Must have written this for somebody else. Ha happiness is not no riddle. Never mind. I'm going to change the key on it and do it tomorrow. Because I can't sing that eye anymore. Slap that bass, slap it till it's dizzy, slap that bass, keep the rhythm busy, slap that bass, misery, you've got to go. Slap that bass, use it as a tonic, slap that bass, you can keep your feel harmonic, slap that bass and the milk and the honey will flow. Dictators would be better off if they zoom, zoom now and then. Today you can see that the happiest men all got rhythm. In which case, if you want to bubble, slap that bass, slap away your trouble. Learn to zoom, 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 slap that bass, slap that bass, slap that bass, slap that bass. I wrote that arrangement for somebody who obviously could sing it in that key. And I don't really like the arrangement I wrote for them. Mm -hmm. It was not too good. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna learn that song. Tomoko, are you there? If you are, we're gonna, we're gonna start doing that song. It's just too, uh, it's too obvious. Howard Gloucester, B-flat seven. Where, Howard? Where, John? Where was the B-flat seven? <laughs> There's a lot of room for a B-flat 7. <laughs> Tomoko, Arno, that's sending a word. She says, bleached. Tomoko, did you hear my bleach poem? Eating bleach? Because I'm not going to repeat it. The word for tonight, bleach. Oh, you did see it. Okay, Howard Klauser. St uh, starting the chorus, slap that bass. Yeah, I, right. Well, that's what I just slap that bass. B flat seven, D flat seven, B flat. But I've played that song a lot since then, and I know, I know it better. It wasn't good. I'll, we're going to do it. Tomoko, slap that bass is coming up. Fabulous, fabulous, Mike. You're easy to please. Uh, probably not so easy to please, at least. I found you. Very exacting. Uh, in a very good way. Um, Howard Gloucester, it was fab. It wasn't fab. You people lie. It was, you should say, I've never heard anything like it. You, you, you. Um, what a performance, right? Those are the things you say. <laughs> I want a list of things, everybody's list of things that they say when you, you, somebody's given a terrible performance and you have to go back and see them, and you say, I've never seen anything like that. What? Amazing. So please, if you, there are no words. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Anybody else? David Johnson is watching.
please fix your middle finger. Sweetheart, I can't. It, it, I it can't. It's, it's, it's bent forever. But it's, it, it's doing a good job. There are no words. Hi, Jay. Always. Hi, Guy Lagerway. Linda Wells. How about that? <laughs> That's, how about that? <laughs> That's good. I like that. I think I'm going to write up a song about this. You were something else. I dig what you were trying to do. <laughs> I dig what you were. Tr no, that's a little too obvious. That, 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 I dig what you were trying to do. Oh, I'm going to write a song on all these. So keep them coming. You never sounded better. <laughs> great, <laughs> great phrasing. Oh, this is hilarious. Bill Crow, you are unbelievable, says Bill Crow. <laughs> I have to write a song like this. Super Biondo. Mr. Goodness, I haven't heard anything like... My goodness, I... <laughs> my goodness, I haven't heard anything like that before. I just came across an old Club Day cassette you made. Wait a minute. You made me. Wait, but that's not... The, that's the guy we're coming up with words. Flatulence. No, no, that's not... Where you? I can die. <laughs> I can die now. I had no idea that bass could be played like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, amazing. Amazing. Is, is that your best? No, I can't use that. <laughs> it's got to be absolutely multifaceted. I used to play on the radio when I had a jazz student in Canby, David Johnson. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, right. So you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I remember that. How is KHMD? Is it still in uh, KMHD? Is it still in operation? Mary Jane Squash. Wow, who would have thought it, says Linda Wells. Wow, who would have thought it? <laughs> These are great. I, I swear I'm going to write them all down and try to make a song out of them. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Yes, it's still in existence. Okay. Um, um, oh. Look what I found. Look what I found today. Look at this picture of Mary McPartland I found today. And that's me in the shade in the back. Now this is what? Oh, if you could see me, I've got big bushy hair and I've got sideburns so this is in the early 70s yeah it's too I'm sorry there's just too much reflection around I know it but that's the best I can do isn't that great ooh that's pretty mm -mm -mm. and then I bet you never saw this one or did I show it to you That's, that's me. I used to sing a chorus on Lady Be Good. Play the bass and, and you know, and uh, what's the word? Imp sing along with it. And uh, Mel used to get a big kick out of it. Imagine that. He liked it. That's, I'm very proud of that picture. I got to put that on the front door. Blow it up to life, to life size and put it on my front door. On oh, my car, paste a little on my forehead, and of course the most important one, which we mustn't forget. Don't forget. Please try not to forget this. Drinking can cause memory loss, or even worse, memory loss. Just, just keep that in mind. Oh, here's another one too. I, I, I adore this picture. I'll show you two more because I've shown. Oh no, three more. Three more. It's... Milt Hinton, Bobby Haggard, myself, and Chubby Jackson. Huh? What do you think of that? Huh? Look at that. Is that some company?
And here's one of all of our favorite people. We both had the same birthday, as I probably told you 12 times already, but that's all right, 13. Me and Dave, we, this is at a meeting in an airport. I never played with him, never played a note with him, but I, I introduced myself to him in an airport in Texas. And he was very gracious and acted like he knew who I was and all that. And uh, we made this little picture on December. We're both December 6th birthday boys. He was exactly 20 years older than I am, was. And the last, the last but not least, just for the fun of it, you've seen it, you've loved it. Grady, Mike, Mike Renzi. Where is it? Mike. Oh, I, I keep, keep my fingers backward. Mike Renzi, Grady, Peggy Lee, and myself. By that time, I still had a lot of hair. Look at that. Little sideburns, adorable. Peggy was a ball. I loved working with her. One time, I'll tell you a Peggy Lee story. I, one time I was in the... She liked me. She liked me. She never gave me a hard time, ever. And one time we were in a recording studio. <clears throat> And uh, no, we were a rehearsal studio and the PA system didn't work. And dumb me, I start fooling around with the PA system to try to make it work. Plug something in and an incredible screech occurs. I mean, just, you know, across the microphone into the thing and the speakers and it was bombastic. And she just looked at me and smiled and that was it. I just, I, I, I read a poem called Peggy Loves Me because of that one, because she'd have killed other people. She just looked at me and smiled. I did her show, a Broadway show, it opened, previews open. no. We did previews for three weeks. I had lines in it, they never let me rehearse my lines, ever. And came opening night, um, no, opening night of previews. And the spotlight hit me, and I looked up, and it th I thought it was, like they say, in a, the ocean, and a, a lifeboat had just come by. I didn't remember a thing I had to say. It wasn't much, but I didn't say it anyway. The show opened on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, closed on a Sunday. Brubeck met the Andrews sisters and told them he didn't like their music. Maxine said, well, Dave, we don't like yours either. Brubeck didn't say that. Oh, I can't imagine Brubeck saying that. I can't imagine that. Let's check that out. Let's check that out. I can't imagine Dave not being charitable. <laughs> Howard Gloucester, Peggy appreciated my feedback. Thank you. Oh. Where is it? Has it fallen by the wayside? No. no where did it go? You're right. I mean, this is... Here it is. Here it is. No, no. No, wait, I'm sorry. I know, I know. It's... it's. The... What happened to it? Somebody... Well, I tell you, I think my daughter's been using the room since when she's staying here with us during the... Corona thing. Let me just look around for it. Where'd it go? A little statue. Where are you? It was here yesterday. I swear it was. I just can't see it. What would have happened to it? Oh! I think I found it now. Thank you. All right, does anybody not know what this is for? Well, I'll tell you. This is for my Mac Award from 1997. This is the big statue. But see the little gold chain? That's my Mac Award from 1992. Two. And the fact that I haven't won any since... So we'll just leave him right here. 
because he's I, I don't want to raise him up because he'll fall into my computer um, okay listen I think it's time I, I've talked and talked it's time for uh, some words I know I can do this I know I know I this is going to be quite possible this is 429 this is 429 20 20 20 Jay's Award. Is that a word? Is that a word? Okay, Jay's Award. All right, play. Dis. Disambiguation. Dis. Hold. Don't go too fast. Disambiguation. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. I have to know what it means. Papyrus. I know what that is. That's a drink. Um. Beelzebub. Yes, I, you got that the other day and I didn't use it. Beelzebub. <laughs> whilst. Whilst. Yes. And there's, I, I have to use it in the middle because there's nothing going to rhyme with that. Albert Kutzen, a stare. Priscilla Quinby, Pier 5. Pier 5. Oh, that's a, one. Uh, <laughs> discombobulated. Thank you. An easy one for a chance. Discombob. You late it. St stairway. 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 Playtex. Now, I forget what playtex really is. Uh, deadpan. Con man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Resolution of ambiguities. Discom disambiguation. Resolution of ambiguities. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Math Matthias. Uh, <laughs> playmate. All right. Bamboozled. We, you know, we used that the other day. We used that the other day. Bamboozled. Uh, I'm going to take one more. M whilst, whilst rhymes with Miles Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Who's it's? Who's it's is, it, is a nice word. watched Anne Hampton Calloway do this many times and she's sneaky she she takes little glances at the list and is thinking like okay you can see the the sparks flying trying to make get things clear. He was in a period of disambiguation when Fred Astaire came along. Undoubtedly the finest dancer in the nation. Whilst Miles Davis was sitting on Pier 5 just blowing his little heart out. Now, Pier 5, i got to stop, was a jazz band that my brother and I played in, in Baltimore, that was really great. So, Pier 5, that's what we're talking about, but I'm using it for another thing. Beelzebub came discombobulated. He got uncomfortable in his playtex. He said, where's the who's it's the that make this thing a little, little uh, looser. That's what I need. Do 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 do. Meanwhile, 
Miles Davis sat and played the blues on Pier 5. Beelzebub was a watching in a state of disambiguation. Ambiguation. He said, maybe I will act like I'm Fred Astaire. I'll go dancing by real nice and everybody on Pier 5 will think I'm just on the stairways to the stars. But it was written in papyrus that this would not happen since the very beginning of time. Because Beelzebub was, in fact, Beelzebub. Disambiguated or not, he did not have a good reputation. Although he did get his playtex, whatever, loosened up a little bit. Got his who's it's where the schnoozits do the do this. Whilst Miles Davis sat there playing the blues. All this happened right there on Pier 5. Oh, do, 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 do. Disambiguation, disambiguation, discombobulated. He was discombobulated by the disambiguation. That's what I should have said. Beelzebub was discombobulated because he was in a state of disambiguation. Request. We all know this song. You can talk among yourselves, but I have to do it. Tony Bennett told me I have to do this song whenever it's requested. I have to do it every night, he said. This is your San Francisco, he said. I said, thank you, Tony. I was asked to go to Los Angeles to play a convention. They asked me, what did I want to be paid? I said, I wanted $10,000. They said, how's 500? Well, I said, all right, fine. 7,500 is my fee. They thought about it and came back with 500. <clears throat> I just told them I wasn't coming for less than 5,000. And in fact, I got my 500. Climbed aboard the plane, sat down, a little white-haired gentleman stepped on board and sat down right next to me. Wow, this guy was famous, sitting right next to me. Amazing, amazing. True story. Take my seat aboard the plane, and what is this I see? Leonard Bernstein comes aboard and sits right next to me. First class New York to LA, some things just work out right. I'll be sitting next to Leonard Bernstein this whole flight. Maybe I should just act like I do not recognize him. Be real cool and do my best not to antagonize him. Now we're rolling down the runway. Next up is L.A. I'm nonchalant like I ride next to Lenny every day. Naturally, I turn to him against my own advice. Introduce myself and find that Lenny's very nice. Soon we start to chat and drink and talk about our lives. We talk about our children and our wives. But what a lovely fellow, what a lucky day. Me and Lenny side by side in New York to L.A. Soon we're chatting, drinking, talking like the very best of pals. Talking music, life and art, death and root canals. Now he's interrupting me, but really that's okay. Because he's a lovely fellow and he's got a lot to say. I recite some songs I wrote, he recites them back. For poetry and music, he seems to have a knack. He tells me that his new show closed and now he's feeling beat and he's not used to dealing with defeat. But what a lovely fellow, what a lucky day. Me and Lenny side by side, New York to L.A.
He does the London Times crossword 10 minutes and he's through. He does the puzzle with his pen. I do not have a clue. What an intellectual but a warm and friendly guy. We talk about the world below as we sail through the sky. Finally, I feel the airplane starting to descend. Do, 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 do. And I know this lovely day is coming to an end. Put our trays and seat backs up just like you're supposed to do. Land with my friend, a fond adieu. What a lovely fellow, what a lucky day. Me and Lenny side by side, New York to LA. What a lovely fellow, though, really, I must say. I've not heard from Lenny since I left him in LA. Not a goddamn word from Lenny since I left him in LA. In LA. In LA. In LA. Anybody had a birthday recently? Anybody have a birthday yesterday? To be honest, I, I, I have a song for you if you did. I think I have a song for you. I do. It's in, a, it's in a file. I should know better than to put my stuff into files. Because that's dangerous. Well, whoever had a birthday yesterday, I'm not going to go coming close and look. I'm just going to sing this for you. Because my, my son was had a birthday on April 21st, and I never got to sing this for him. Say you know, you say you know, brother. got a problem. Nothing's going right. You're feeling just a little blue. Well, brother, I understand your plight. You're feeling just a little sad, feeling just a little down. There's a gray cloud overhead that just keeps hanging around. Well, don't worry now. We've all walked in your shoes because you've got those first day after your birthday blues. Yesterday was fabulous. Yes, I understand. You had a little party, drank some champagne, got really out of hand. Well, you got some pretty gifts, some champagne, birthday cake. But today, you're one year older and that's, you're hoping it's a mistake. Back to real life weather and the news. And those first day after your birthday blues. Whoa, whoa, whoa. time to face the situation. You've blown out all the candles so much for the celebration. Today's a subito piano, yes, a very quick diminuendo. But do not bet it's a safe bet. But do not bet it's safe to bet on a gradual crescendo. Don't worry now, we've all walked in your shoes. Cause you've got those first day after your birthday, first day after your birthday, First day after your birthday blues. Doo, doo, doo. You know, people come into clubs and sing happy birthday, happy birthday. Sing happy birthday to me. And you do. And you've got, you got to find out whose birthday was yesterday. And you sing that song. 
Oh, it's 8.06. How terrible. Thank you much for the playing. Me and Lenny brings back such wonderful memories of our recording sessions during the mid. Yes, yes, Phil. Well, folks, I'm going to take my little statue and go to bed and hope that I don't sleep on the top. Sharp pipes. It's great to see you all. If anybody wants to know that, I'm starting a, another series at my, at my YouTube thing, whatever it is, my YouTube place. Hello, Vaughn. How are you? Good, how are you? Vaughn just came in for the last part of the show. Vaughn came in to just to say goodnight to everybody. I just wanted to say hi. Vaughn just wanted to say hi. He's in the... Anyway, uh... How was yesterday's chicken? <laughs> he, he wasn't proud of it. He didn't like it. He said it, he cooked it too long, right? Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. He seasons things great. It's a little good memories, uh... Yesterday's chicken, he said, felt was a little dry. No, I'm not still terrorizing old ladies. No. <laughs> Oops. What's it? Good night, terrorizing babies. Bonnie John, what's it? No, I mean old people, old ladies. Old ladies. Did old... I say babies? Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Yes. He's, he's not terrorizing lazy. The lady's good still night, tomorrow. Good night, Nancy Reed. Good night, everybody. Listen, it's great to see you all. Thanks for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. It makes my day. Hi, Smoko. Hello, Tomoko. And uh, thank you very much for coming to see us. We will see you tomorrow. We'll have a whole brand new show. Bye. Not very new. Bye. Public. Done. And now we'll save it. Huh? Okay.